The story begins by showing a little kid who's running scared. But lucky for him, an old guy who owns a construction company spots him. The old man takes the scared child in, gets him some food, and introduces him to his daughter, Jisoo, and a lady who runs the restaurant at his company. Later, the old man takes the kid to the police station to find his family, but no luck. So, the old man decides to make the kid a part of his family. Jumping ahead 10 years, the kid, now named John Ho-woo, has grown up well under the old man's care. Because of his good upbringing, John Ho-woo turns out to be a helpful and kind guy. He stands up for his buddies who are getting bullied by school troublemakers. The old man worries about John Ho-woo when he gets involved with the police due to the bullies. It's clear the old man really loves John Ho-woo, especially when he gets super mad at the criminals who claim John Ho-woo has no parents. On John Ho-woo's side, even though he doesn't remember his real parents, he's content because he's got the old man who truly cares for him. One day, while Zhang Ho-woo is helping out at the restaurant, he overhears the company accountants chatting about the old man's construction business going under. Zhang Ho-woo tries to warn his old man, but the old man is too caught up in work to listen. Before he knows it, the news hits that the old man's company has gone bankrupt unexpectedly. Zhang Ho-woo sensed that something was off and headed to his old man's place. There, the workers were clashing with the officers. Zhang Ho-woo wasn't okay with how the officers were treating the workers, so he tried to step in and stop them all by himself. But he was outnumbered and couldn't do much. Just then, a guy named Han Soon-jo showed up. He was the accountant dealing with the company's money matters. Soon-jo told Zhang Ho-woo that his anger and fighting wouldn't change anything. Not long after, Zhang Ho-woo saw the building his old man had made being torn down. And the problems didn't stop at night. Workers started getting money in their accounts from the old man. This worried Zhang Ho-woo, so he rushed to the construction site. There, he couldn't believe his eyes. He saw his old man doing something unbelievable. The good times Zhang Ho-woo had felt turned into suffering because of the accountant's decision to call the company bankrupt. Zhang Ho-woo had sensed something fishy from the start. He tried to get answers by visiting different accounting offices, but no one seemed willing to talk about the office that had issued the bankruptcy declaration. Amidst Zhang Ho-woo's despair, he noticed a billboard for an accountant academy. This sparked an idea. He could become an accountant himself. So he talked to his two best friends and told them he wanted to join the biggest accounting firm that had caused his old man's company to go bankrupt. His friends were unsure at first because being an accountant usually requires a higher education. But they saw how determined Zhang Ho-woo was and ended up supporting him. From then on, Zhang Ho-woo was all about studying. He lost track of time and even skipped meals. Somehow his hard work paid off. He got accepted at the accounting firm he aimed for called TL Accountant. Even though he only finished high school and skipped college, he faced challenges. His colleagues treated him like a kid and thought he was a burden. They didn't even give him files for his locker, unlike other workers his age. Zhang Ho-woo felt it was unfair and tried to ask a senior for help, but instead, he got insulted for not having a college education like the others. Deputy company leader Han J. kyun got wind of how Zhang Ho-woo got into Taeyeol Accountant. He wondered why someone like Zhang Ho-woo was let in. His subordinate, Director Hyung woo spilled the beans that the person who recommended John Ho-woo was none other than Han jae kyuns own son, Soon jo This raised questions about Soon jos motives. John Ho-woo found himself alone in his new workspace, with no one willing to team up with him. Then he met a woman named Yona. He thought she might be a senior who could give him a task, so he boldly asked her for one. But she explained that her role was to train new employees, not assign tasks. This hit John Ho-woo hard, making him realize how tough it was to be an accountant and learn the truth about his old man's company. He felt intimidated by his lack of higher education. While lost in thought on the building's rooftop, Zhang Ho-woo ran into Sung jo the man who had been sending him letters about his old man's company going bankrupt. In this meeting, Sung jo revealed that he was the one who vouched for Zhang Ho-woo at the company, even though he hadn't gone to college. Sung Jo wanted to see Zhang Ho-woo's determination and skills, not just his educational background. 
He believed that being a great accountant was about real achievements, not just what's on paper. At first, Zhang Houwu couldn't grasp Song Zhou's perspective. He believed he had no connections and no chance to prove himself worthy. But amidst his despair, he realized something he could do. He took off his name tag and started cleaning all the floors. Everyone around him was amazed by his actions. Now, Zhang Houwu didn't hesitate to tackle any task given to him. Even if it meant just photocopying files for others, he did it wholeheartedly. Song Zhou noticed Zhang Houwu's actions and asked why he was doing it. Song Zhou thought people were using Zhang Houwu, even giving him the nickname Messenger. But Zhang Houwu explained that he intentionally took on those tasks because everyone seemed to depend on him for their work. We get a glimpse into the strained relationship between Song Zhou and Han Jae Kyun. Their beliefs clashed significantly. Han Jae Kyun, now the deputy CEO of the company, was eager to lead, even if it meant using underhanded methods. Song Zhou's intentions for accepting Zhang Houwu become clear. He believed that Zhang Houwu could be a wild card, capable of shaking up the company if something were to happen. So, Song Zhou asked Zhang Houwu to join his division. But Zhang Houwu had a different plan when he joined Tail Accountant, so he turned down Song Zhou's offer. Song Zhou was disappointed because most new workers would jump at that chance. Meanwhile, Han Jae Kyun had big dreams of becoming the company's president. He had a sneaky plan. He stationed his team at a nearby coffee shop to eavesdrop on conversations and gather info, especially from the audit division that challenged his ambitions. He was currently handling a significant project involving selling shares of a company called PayPal Entertainment. Han Jae Kyun instructed Hyung Woo to be prepared for any obstacles that might arise, particularly if the finance team, led by Kang Hyun, discovered something that could derail the sale. Kang Hyun, who was heading the audit team for the share sale, was in a tight spot. His team couldn't confirm PayPal Entertainment's debt at a private bank, which was crucial to understand the company's financial state. Zhang Ho Wu overheard this and offered to go to the bank to get the confirmation proof Kang Hyun needed. Kang Hyun had no other option, so he entrusted the task to Zhang Ho Wu. Even though his team thought it was unlikely that Zhang Ho Wu could get the debt confirmation, given the teller's apparent reluctance to help the audit team. However, just before Zhang Ho Wu left, he bumped into Yona, who happened to be headed to the same place. Upon arriving, Zhang Ho Wu faced the same issue as described by Kang Hyun's subordinates. The teller seemed to be deliberately ignoring him, prioritizing other customers instead. Zhang Ho Wu's genius kicked in, and he devised a plan. He had all the waiting customers fill out a form he prepared regarding their needs. This tactic quickly cleared the line, and the teller no longer had a reason to deny Zhang Ho Wu the debt confirmation documents needed by Kang Hyun. Seeing that Zhang Ho Wu managed to obtain the debt confirmation, Kang Hyun was amazed. It was surprising that someone like Zhang Ho Wu, who was often underestimated, was able to achieve this while his own subordinates struggled with the bank tellers. As a result, Kang Hyun enlisted Zhang Ho Wu's help for the PayPal Entertainment Financial Audit, bringing joy to Zhang Ho Wu. Finally, he had a project he could contribute to since he joined the company. Using his intelligence and number crunching skills, John Ho Wu made a significant realization about PayPal Entertainment's finances that even Kang Hyun and his team hadn't spotted before. When John Ho Wu reported his findings to Kang Hyun, they both realized that PayPal Entertainment was actually bankrupt, unable to pay its debts. Strangely, the company planning to buy PayPal Entertainment was covering this up. Han Jae Kyun raised questions about this, and it became clear that all of this was intentional. As it turned out, the company planning to buy PayPal Entertainment was doing so to hide his son's tax evasion. With no other options, Han Jae Kyun proposed a difficult choice to Kang Hyun. He asked Kang Hyun to manipulate PayPal Entertainment's audit report to ensure the purchase would proceed. If Kang Hyun complied, Han Jae Kyun promised him a higher rank and a share of the money. But if Kang Hyun refused, Han Jae Kyun threatened Kang Hyun's career. Faced with this heavy decision, Kang Hyun could only remain silent. While working on auditing the jewelry company with her colleague, Yona ended up partnering with Zhang Ho Wu to complete the task quickly.
Her colleague had to leave for an urgent matter, giving Yona the chance to spend time with John Hoolu. This led to conversations about the luxury jewelry they were currently auditing. On the rooftop the next day, Kang Yeon was deep in thought about Han J. Kyun's words. Zhang Ho Wu approached him and talked about moments when Kang Hyun felt powerless to do what he believed was right. Zhang Ho Wu's words seemed to guide Kang Hyun in making a decision. Ultimately, Kang Hyun chose to report everything he had discovered, even if it meant losing his job as an accountant. This choice brought him happiness, and he thanked Zhang Ho Wu for giving him the courage. When Kang Hyun met Soon Jo later, he advised Soon Jo to educate Zhang Ho Wu well praising Zhang Houwu's goodness and unique abilities. Meanwhile, Hyung Wu apologized to Han Jae Kyun for underestimating Kang Yeon's courage to take that step, even at the cost of his job. However, Han Jae Kyun revealed he had a backup plan, expecting such a move. The story also unveils Zhang Houwu's reason for wanting to be a messenger for everyone. It's not just about tasks. It's a way for him to gather information about the office dynamics, influential people, and who's in control. His main goal is to find out who was responsible for his old man's death. In a meeting between Han J. Kyun and Chan Ju, the owner of the company planning to buy PayPal Entertainment, Chan Ju expresses his frustration as his plan to acquire the company has fallen apart. He fears his son might face arrest by the prosecutor. Han J. Kyun reveals a backup plan. He intends to create false documentation about his son's embezzlement mistakes. With this fabricated evidence, Chan Ju's son is promptly released by the prosecutor. With the crisis seemingly resolved, Taeyeol accounting firm is tasked with valuing all of PayPal Entertainment's assets. PayPal Entertainment, the primary capital provider, intends to auction off its assets to settle its unmanageable debts. As the designated accounting firm, Tail must determine standard selling and purchase prices. However, Sonjo discovers a trail of embezzlement in his son Chan Ju's PayPal Entertainment Company account history. Chan Ju realizes this and requests Han J. Kyun's assistance in obtaining all of PayPal Entertainment's assets, offering a slightly higher price. This is because PayPal Entertainment lacks valuable assets. Sonjo, appointed as the representative accountant for the company intending to purchase PayPal Entertainment assets, seeks Zhang Ho Wu's help in keeping this arrangement secret from Chan Ju's company. Sonjo believes that Chan Ju would eagerly purchase the assets to conceal his son's secret. However, if Chan Ju buys the assets above the standard price, it would benefit the company that appointed Sonjo. Zhang Ho Wu, unfamiliar with the situation, seeks his two friends' help to ensure that the standard price set by Sunjo remains hidden from Chanju. The next day, as Sunjo and Zhang Houwu are en route to the auction to present the standard price, they encounter a group of cars attempting to obstruct their path. Realizing that this group aims to stop them from reaching the auction on time, Sunjo and Zhang Houwu put up a fight to break free from their pursuers. However, they eventually get caught. During this commotion, Zhang Houwu loses the file he was carrying. Undeterred, he takes off running towards the auction location as fast as he can. Unbeknownst to everyone, Zhang Houwu had prepared a backup plan with his two best friends. The documents stolen by the pursuing group were actually fake, as the original documents were safeguarded by Zhang Ho's friend. This development makes Chan Zhu uneasy, concerned that the company supporting Sun Zhou might offer a higher bid than he submitted. Amid his panic, Chan Ju hastily snatches the document from Hyun Wu and quickly writes down a high bid. However, when the auction takes place, he's shocked to find that Soon Jo's bid is unexpectedly low. His own impulsive mistake forces him to buy the PayPal Entertainment Company at a much higher price than initially proposed by the company supporting Soon Jo. This outcome brings Zhang Ho Wu immense happiness as he feels like a true accountant for the first time. During this moment, Zhang Ho Wu overhears the owner of the company that backed Soon Jo praising Soon Jo's competence. He had made a profitable decision, just as he did when his old man's company was liquidated. This triggers memories of the events that led Zhang Ho Wu to become an accountant at Tao's company, reminding him of his old man's struggles. Filled with anger, 
Zhang Houwu confronts Sun Zhou about his decision to declare his old man's company bankrupt. He questions why Sun Zhou's decision caused him and his old man so much pain. Despite Zhang Houwu's investigation, there's no record of Sun Zhou's decision to declare bankruptcy in the company's files, unlike other cases. Sun Zhou remains silent, but later at his home, he recalls the pivotal moment when his decision had unintended consequences. He remembers having a romantic relationship with Ji Su, the daughter of his old man Zhang Houwu. This mistake led Sun Zhou to lose contact with Ji Su, and the guilt from that incident continues to haunt him. As these memories overwhelm him, Sun Zhou loses consciousness. When Zhang Ho Wu reviews the photos he collected of his suspects, he wonders why Sun Zhou would have written a statement about his old man's company. He finds it hard to believe that Sun Zhou would have done so without a reason. Sun Zhou is also going through a difficult time due to the impact on his relationship with Ji Su. They had been on the verge of getting married, but the problems involving Zhang Ho Wu's old man caused Ji Su to blame Sun Zhou for her father's death and cancel their plans. Sun Zhou meets Zhang Ho Wu and hands over a document, although it's clear that Zhang Ho Wu is still upset about Sun Zhou's lack of response to his questions from the previous day. The document given by Sun Zhou pertains to a company called Somatech, which is facing a situation similar to Zhang Ho Wu's old man's company. Jizen Bank, Somatech's main creditor, has approached Taeil Accountant to handle the issue. Somatech is struggling to make its debt payments to Jizen Bank and is on the brink of bankruptcy. Hyang Wu brings forth a more beneficial plan for Taeil Accountant, selling the struggling Somatech company to a foreign entity named Private Equity. This plan aligns with Han J. Kuhn's aspiration to become a president director. If the plan succeeds, it would provide Han J. Kuhn with a substantial amount of money, potentially boosting his chances in the upcoming presidential election. Han Jae Kyun is thrilled by Hyang Wu's proposal, recognizing its brilliance. Hyang Wu understands that Jizen Bank also intends to sell Somatech eventually, once the company is unable to meet its debt obligations. He reaches out to the bank's director to discuss potential cooperation in selling Somatech after reaping profits from an auction. On a different note, Sung Jo, the chief accountant overseeing both Jizen Bank and Somatech matters, instructs his team to meticulously search for loopholes that might help Somatech avoid being taken over by Jizen Bank. They aim to find ways for Jizen Bank to provide additional capital, with the goal of stabilizing Somatech and preventing its acquisition. Sonjo directs Zhang Ho Wu and Yuna to visit the Somatech company in person, urging them to understand why it's struggling to meet its obligations to Jizen Bank. The situation at Somatech reminds Zhang Houwu of the challenges his old man faced, which ultimately led to job losses for the workers. Carefully investigating, Zhang Houwu notices discrepancies between the financial reports of his old man's company and the reports submitted to the authorities. This parallels the situation at Somatech. However, Sun Zhou has yet to reveal his past experiences. Before he can explain, he is summoned by Han Jae Kyun, to discuss the potential sale of Somatech to a foreign entity. Sun Zhou feels angry as this situation mirrors what happened to his old man's company. Sun Zhou had previously discovered that Han Jae Kyun had altered his report without his consent. However, Han Jae Kyun insists that he only made corrections, not replacements. Han Jae Kyun insists that Somatech should accept the offer from private equity to purchase the company. This, he argues, is better than the risk of a takeover by Jizen Bank. Han Jae Kyun instructs Sung Jo to provide all gathered information to Hyang Wu, as Hyang Wu will manage the sale process. Sung Jo, filled with frustration, can only contain his anger towards his father and leaves the situation. He learns that Jizen Bank refused to provide capital to Somatech, suspecting Hyang Wu's involvement. Sung Jo confronts Hyang Wu alongside Zhang Ho Wu and in his frustration, physically confronts Hyang Wu, demanding to know his true motives behind attempting to sell Somatech. Song Zhou brings up the incident involving reports about his old man's company, implying that Hyang Wu might have manipulated those reports as well. This revelation leads Zhang Ho Wu to question whether Song Zhou is truly innocent in reporting on his old man's company.
Hyang Wu, desperate and tearful, admits that he lacks the power to reject Han Jae Kyun's orders like Sun Jo can. He feels compelled to do whatever it takes to reach his goals, even if it means manipulating reports as he did before. With emotions running high, Zhang Ho Wu asks for the full truth, prompting Soon Job to take him to his place for a heart to heart conversation over beers. Soon Jo then proceeds to share his side of the story, revealing the circumstances that led to his actions. This leads Zhang Ho Wu to realize that Soon Jo is not a bad person. During their conversation, Zhang Ho Wu notices a photo of Sun Jo and Ji Su together, deepening his understanding of Sun Jo's character. The next day, Sun Jo and Zhang Ho Wu's relationship becomes more collaborative, resembling that of work partners. Sun Jo shares his true intentions in recruiting Zhang Ho Wu to hold individuals like Han Jae Kyun and Hyang Wu accountable for their mistakes. Their shared goal strengthens their bond. With their plan in motion, Sun Jo and Zhang Ho Wu aim to hold Han Jae Kyun accountable for his actions and prevent the sale of Somatec. They work together to gather information that could stop the sale. A meeting with the private equity company's representative is scheduled, and everyone, including Sun Jo and Zhang Ho Wu, is taken by surprise when they realize the representative is Ji Su, the same woman Sun Jo has been searching for. During the meeting, Zhang Ho Wu passionately presents his ideas about Somatec's potential survival with proper financial backing. However, Ji Su swiftly challenges his opinions. Sun Zhou appears distracted, focusing on Ji Su, who seems distant and cold, reminiscent of their past encounters. After the meeting concludes, Sun Zhou takes the opportunity to talk privately with Ji Su. Overcome with emotions, he embraces her only for Jisoo to push him away and deliver a sharp slap. She makes it clear that she cannot forget how Sonjo's actions contributed to her father's death. Sonjo doesn't defend himself, recognizing his guilt in the situation. Despite his efforts to reach out to Jisoo and understand her motives, John Ho's attempts seem to fall on deaf ears. Jisoo remains distant and unresponsive to his concerns, even though he once considered her like a sister. After digging deeper and uncovering the real purpose behind the private equity company's interest in Somatec, Zhang Ho decides to confront Ji Su once again. He visits her and explains the private equity company's intention to acquire Somatec's technology. Zhang Ho proposes that Ji Su becomes Somatec's sole investor, which would ensure the technology benefits the company's workers. However, Ji Su dismisses this idea, stating that it's simpler to buy Somatec directly since it's facing bankruptcy. Despite his disappointment, Zhang Ho refuses to give up. He provides Ji Su with documents containing evidence of who was truly responsible for her father's death, hoping that this revelation might prompt her to reconsider her actions. But Ji Su remains resolute in her plan to buy Somatec, leaving Zhang Ho puzzled about how to stop her and prevent the company's downfall. As the situation unfolds, Zhang Ho realizes a way to prevent the sale of Somatec. However, when he rushes to intervene, he finds out that Sun Zhou had already taken steps to prevent the sale. Sun Zhou successfully persuaded the owner of Somatec to sell the patent rights of their technology, allowing the company to pay off its debts to Jizen Bank. This outcome thwarts Han Jae Kyun's plans once again, infuriating him. Sun Zhou and Ji Su have a private conversation but Ji Su remains distant and cold towards him, despite Zhang Ho having revealed the truth about her father's death. In the meantime, Han Jae Kyun faces a new challenge with the return of Sun Yan, the leader of the audit division. Sun Yan holds more power and influence than Han Jae Kyun and seems to bear a grudge against him for his past arbitrary actions, including firing Kang Yan, a trusted member of the audit team. On the other hand, Zhang Ho returns to meet Ji Su and asks why Ji Su can now become a trustee of the private equity company that used to take over her father's company. Ji Su then explained that she was looking for the person with the initials and because it was likely that the person was responsible for everything that happened. For that, Ji Su will not give up until everything is revealed. While at the Tainil accountant's office, Song Yan, who wanted to reciprocate Han Jae Kyun's treatment, proposed a limited meeting with the aim that the audit division he headed could audit Jizen Bank, 
which of course Han Jae Kyun immediately tried to prevent. Until we finally find out if it turns out that Yona is actually the daughter of the director of Jizen Bank. That was so attentive, it even seemed to tease Yona because she was close to Zhang Ho. But the arrival of Song Yan makes Zhang Ho a little confused to be able to reveal who is the identity of Anne mentioned by Ji Su. Because now the people in Taeyeol accounting firm seem to have an attachment to each other to prove their crimes. Every time there is a problem there, there is always good that can be achieved. Likewise, Zhang Ho can now get closer to Yona, because Yona seems to already have a taste for Zhang Ho. When Zhang Ho asked about who was the important person in the private equity company who lived in Korea to Yona, Yona eagerly met her father to ask about it. And when Yona saw Zhang Ho, who was cold when he finished his fieldwork, she immediately contacted Zhang Ho because she wanted to meet him over a beer. Were Yuna over a drink, then tells about the state of accountant Tato's office from a different point of view. Like a romantic relationship between employees. When Yona got drunk, she scribbled down a name that Zhang Ho had asked about an important person from a private equity company in Korea. Yet Zhang Ho found himself staring at Yona's sleeping face. The name he got was Lee Chanju. Now, Zhang Ho had to figure out how to get close and gain the trust of Chanju, who Han Jae Kyun was persuading to buy a well-known Korean cake company. This company's shares were owned by the private equity firm. Han Jae Kyun got the green light after Ji Su met him and asked him to sell the cake company. Initially, Chan Ju was hesitant to buy the cake company. But after examining the audit data brought by Han Jae Kyun, Chan Ju became intrigued by the consistent net profit the cake company raked in. Yet Zhang Ho and Soon Jo smelled something fishy. They dug further and found out that the cake company would go bankrupt in just two years. This posed a risk, especially for Ji Su, as it seemed she was involved in deceiving people like Chan Ju. They endeavored to thwart Chan Ju's impending purchase of the cake company. Zhang Ho even went to Chan Ju's house to discuss it. However, Chan Ju had already left for abroad to finalize the deal. In his confusion, Zhang Ho was approached by a luxury sports car, Yona. She swiftly took Zhang Ho to the airport to catch up with Chan Ju before he left. At the airport, Chan Ju had surpassed the flight boundary, leaving Yona scrambling to buy a ticket to catch up. However, she forgot her passport, leaving her frustrated and unable to assist Zhang Ho. Surprisingly, Soon Jo had a chance encounter with Chan Ju. But Chan Ju revealed he canceled the cake company purchase because Zhang Ho had reached out to him just before his flight. Zhang Ho had ingeniously created an emergency password to buy a flight ticket and meet Chan Ju. With his acquired information, Zhang Ho convinced Chan Ju to abandon the cake company purchase due to its potential financial loss. Song Jo marveled at Zhang Ho's brilliant thinking. Later, Zhang Ho was in the file room when Yona approached him, asking for cooperation on something. But before he could respond, they heard someone entering the room. Quick on his feet, Zhang Ho hid with Yona, making her heart race due to their closeness. The newcomer was an accountant who had belittled Zhang Ho before due to his educational background. They continued to discuss Zhang Ho, and when Yona heard them criticizing him, she burst out of hiding and confronted them both. However, Yona's actions raised questions since she didn't seem to have any connection with Zhang Ho. While at an official dinner, Han Jae Kyun encounters Lee Sung Ju Chan Ju's younger brother, who has a plan to take over as the company's president with Han Jae Kyun's assistance. In another scene, Zhang Ho talks with Song Yan at a cafe near the office, discussing their shared goal of getting back at Han Jae Kyun. They're unaware that their conversation might be overheard by Han Jae Kyun's informants among the cafe staff. Soon after, Zhang Ho is summoned to Han Jae Kyun's room. As Zhang Ho has been consistently thwarting Han Jae Kyun's plans, Han Jae Kyun starts to take him more seriously. With his authority, Han Jae Kyun promises to teach Zhang Ho an unexpected lesson for daring to oppose him. He begins by excluding Zhang Ho from all ongoing projects, with this being the first step of his retaliation. Not long after, several people approached Zhang Ho's desk to take away all his files, leaving Yon Ah curious about the issues he was facing. After his meeting with Han Jae Kyun, 
Zhang Ho appeared deep in thought. Soon, Chan Zhu approached him and expressed his gratitude for Zhang Ho's help the previous day. Chan Zhu even suggested to Han Jie Kun that Zhang Ho be appointed as the company's accountant. This made Han Jie Kun uneasy as he couldn't easily remove Zhang Ho from accountant Tao. While leaving, Chan Zhu bumped into his younger brother, Li Sung Zhu. The encounter left Chan Zhu suspicious that Sung Zhu might be planning to take over his presidency. Frustrated, Chan Zhu insulted younger brother as a family failure, which silenced Sung Zhu. However, when Chan Zhu was alone in the restroom, Sung Zhu retaliated by dunking his brother's head in the toilet and quickly making his escape. Known for his volatile temperament, Chan Zhu was quick to give chase to Sung Zhu as the latter attempted to make a getaway in his car. In a fit of rage or perhaps temporary madness, Chan Zhu impulsively crashed his car into Sung Zhu's vehicle. This heated quarrel between the two siblings resulted in both of them being hospitalized. The aftermath of their confrontation had far-reaching consequences, leading to a decrease in the shares of Chan Zhu's company. As a result, the responsibility now falls on Zhang Ho, who has assumed the role of the company's accountant, to meticulously analyze and rectify the decline in stock value. However, the challenges that Zhang Ho faces are compounded by the fact that his access to Taeyil accountant firm has been curtailed by Han Jae Kyun. This limitation severely impedes Zhang Ho's ability to gather the critical information he needs to navigate the intricate financial landscape. Fortunately, Yeon Ah emerges as a guardian angel of sorts for Zhang Ho. Yeon Ah consistently provides him with the essential files and documents necessary for his work. Although Zhang Ho is appreciative of her assistance, he decides to inquire about the underlying reasons for her support. This well-intentioned query, however, elicits a hint of frustration from Yona, as she perceives Zhang Ho to be somewhat oblivious to her emotional nuances. Thankfully, Yon Ah possesses a keen understanding of individuals like Zhang Ho, who are laser-focused on their work to the exclusion of interpersonal dynamics. This comprehension allows her to forgive Zhang Ho's occasional lack of sensitivity. In fact, Yona seizes the opportunity to delve into Zhang Ho's ongoing quest to unearth the identity of Anne. This enigmatic figure serves as a conduit for companies engaging in transactions with private equity, playing a significant role in mediating such interactions. Interestingly, even seasoned entrepreneurs like Chan Zhu are left in the dark about Anne's true identity, given that their transactions have never required face-to-face -face encounters. Upon hearing Yuna's suggestion, Zhang Ho realized that tracing the flow of funds from Chan Zhu's company to N might unveil their identities. To pursue this lead, they returned to the file room to score through the records from Chan Zhu's company. The collaborative effort brought them closer together, so much so that even as night fell, Zhang Ho found himself unable to focus due to his thoughts being consumed by Yuna's image, leaving a smile on his face. In the process, Zhang Ho stumbled upon a seemingly suspicious file related to a ship purchase made by Chan Zhu's company. This discovery seemed to hold valuable information. The next day, Zhang Ho rushed to share his findings with Sung Zhou. However, Sung Zhou, after reviewing the details, concluded that the ship purchase adhered to proper procedures and appeared to be free from any irregularities. He advised Zhang Ho to explore other avenues for information. Assisted by Yona, Zhang Ho returned to the file room. As they sifted through the files, an almost disastrous moment occurred when Yona almost dropped a closet. Zhang Ho's quick reflexes saved the situation and, in turn, caused Yona's heart to flutter. Amid the chaos, Zhang Ho focused on a particular file involving the financing of a bridge construction project by a company. Suddenly, a memory from his past encounter with Han J. Kuhn rushed to the forefront of his mind. As the pieces of the puzzle came together, it became apparent to Zhang Ho that Han J. Kuhn was the elusive Anne, the mastermind behind the private equity company's funding. Song Zhou Tu had a realization. Anne's identity was a fragment of his own father's name. Fueled by this revelation, Song Zhou confronted Ji Su and disclosed the truth about Anne's identity and was the one primarily responsible for concocting the report that led to the bankruptcy of Jisoo's father's company, achieved by surreptitiously selling its patent rights to a private equity company. 
Overwhelmed with guilt and shame, Soon Jo promised to put an end to his father's schemes. Meanwhile, now aware of Han Jae Kyun's true identity, Zhang Ho sought out Son Yan. With a grave expression, Zhang Ho implored Son Yan for assistance in taking down Han Jae Kyun. Driven by determination, Zhang Ho embarked on a relentless quest to uncover any evidence that could expose Han Jae Kyun's misdeeds. He discovered that regulations prohibited an accountant from holding a position within a company. Armed with this knowledge, Zhang Ho strategized to bring down Han Jae Kyun. However, Yon Ah dampened his hopes by revealing that the penalty for such actions was merely a negligible fine. This setback forced Zhang Ho to seek an alternative method to dismantle Han Jae Kyun's influence and bring him to justice from the core. On a different note, Jisoo, fueled by her grudge against Han Jae Kyun, was observed entering his room in an attempt to use incriminating information against him. However, Han Jae Kyun had already anticipated her move. Instead of yielding to her threats, he counterattacked by revealing a secret Jisoo had been hiding. She had a child. This revelation left Jisoo vulnerable and defenseless against Han Jae Kyun's retaliation. Witnessing this exchange, Hyang Wu's expression changed, indicating that he might be contemplating betraying Han Jae Kyun. He seemed inclined to comply with Jisoo's demands due to his guilt towards her. However, the conversation took place in a cafe near the office, making it susceptible to being reported back to Han Jae Kyun by the barista subordinate. On a different front, Kyung Yul, an accountant who had once belittled Zhang Ho, was now grappling with deteriorating eyesight. Seeking assistance, Kyung Yul turned to Han Jae Kyun for medical treatment and sought benefits for his wife, now working in the advisory division. Puzzled by the request, Han Jae Kyun inquired about the reason behind his obligation to help Kyung Yul. Kyung Yul then presented a file containing evidence of Han Jae Kyun's manipulation of the report involving Zhang Ho's company He. Despite Kyung Yul's efforts, Han Jae Kyun arrogantly managed to turn the situation around and threaten Kyung Yul. This left Kyung Yul in tears, realizing the risk of confronting someone as ruthless as Han Jae Kyun. Observing this, Hyang Wu began to question his loyalty, as he witnessed the true nature of the master he had served for so long, someone exceedingly cruel and driven by greed. Lost in thought, Hyang Wu was approached by a fellow accountant of similar age. Shortly after, Kang Gyon joined them, offering to lend a listening ear to Hyang Wu, who appeared burdened. The following day, Hyang Wu witnessed Han Jae Kyun's cruelty firsthand, when Kyung Il was abruptly dismissed from Taeyeol Accountant Company. Kyung Il, in need of money for his eye treatment, humbled himself by apologizing and promising to comply with Han Jae Kyun's demanding. In the meantime, Soon Jo discovered the truth about Ji Su leaving him while pregnant. Overwhelmed with mixed emotions, Soon Jo approached Ji Su to inquire, and upon confirmation, he abruptly left. The shame of facing Ji Su due to her father's reprehensible actions weighed heavily on him. In short, Han Jae Kyun met Chan Ju, who had been released from the hospital, to deliver the news that the majority of shareholders had voted to remove Chan Ju as president and replace him with Sung Ju. This decision was influenced by Sung Ju's he plan, supported by Han Jae Kyun, to mutually aid each other in becoming president of their respective companies. They successfully convinced a majority of shareholders, including Jisoo whom Han Jae Kyun had threatened to vote for Sung Ju. Despite their confidence, the vote to dismiss Chan Ju from the presidency gained fewer votes than expected, leaving Han Jae Kyun and Sung Ju shocked. In a surprising turn, Chan Ju received support from investors due to efforts by Sung Jo and Zhang Ho. They invalidated a certificate signed by Jisoo that had endorsed Sungju, while secretly keeping their influence hidden from Han Jae Kyun. Sungju's plan was foiled, and in frustration, he instructed someone to gather information about Zhang Ho. In the meantime, Han Jae Kyun is now aware that Hyang Wu has secretly betrayed him by sharing documents from his hidden safe with Jisoo. However, Han Jae Kyun pretends to remain oblivious to Hyang Wu's he actions as he is planning to take revenge on him for his betrayal. Han Jae Kyun instructs Hyang Wu and Kyung Yo, with the assistance of his men, to set fire to the warehouse containing incriminating documents.
Hyang Wu senses something amiss before reaching the warehouse and contacts Zhang Ho to come to the location. Zhang Ho realizes that a grave situation is unfolding and alerts Soon Jo to join them. Upon arrival, Han Jae Kyun's, he subordinates attack Hyang Wu and Kyung Il as per Han Jae Kyun's orders to eliminate them. Shortly after, Zhang Ho arrives and attempts to open the gate to rescue them from the perilous situation. Han Jae Kyun's men intervened, leading to a fierce brawl. When Zhang Ho found himself outnumbered and in a tight spot, Son Jo rushed in to assist him. Zhang Ho managed to open the warehouse door to rescue Kyung Il, but unfortunately, the building exploded, preventing them from saving Hyang Wu. The authorities arrived, and amidst sorrowful colleagues, Zhang Ho and Soon Jo could only bow their heads in grief as Hyang Wu's body was carried away. At the funeral home, Zhang Ho and Soon Jo observed Han Jae Kyun putting on a facade of sorrow. Not long after, Han Jae Kyun introduced a new subordinate to replace Hyang Wu. Despite being aware of Han Jae Kyun's he wicked deeds towards Hyang Wu, Zhang Ho and Soon Jo couldn't immediately report it to the police due to a lack of evidence. Instead, they enlisted Kyung Il's help, encouraging him to remain at Tae Il Accountant Company to devise a plan for bringing down Han Jae Kyun in the future. Han Jae Kyun is hatching a new scheme with Sung Ju to seize the presidency from Chan Ju. Their plan involves manipulating Chan Ju's innocent son into signing a loan agreement that uses his share guarantee while he's serving overseas. Chan Ju unknowingly agrees, only to realize later that he has been trapped by criminal charges related to underage abuse, causing his father's shares to plummet. Upon discovering the situation, Chan Ju rushes to inform Zhang Ho, but he's intercepted by Sung Ju and Han Jae Kyun's he subordinates. Sung Ju declares his success in overthrowing Chan Ju by making him sign the loan agreement, making Sung Ju the dominant shareholder. Despite Chan Ju's protests, Sung Ju reveals yet another sinister plan using a prosecutor to arrest Chan Ju on various charges, rendering him incapacitated and caught in their trap. With this maneuver, Sung Ju secures his position as president director, replacing Chan Ju. But he still has more schemes in mind, including involving Zhang Ho. On the other hand, Zhang Ho is in Sun Zhou's he room when Kang Yeon approaches him with a file provided by Hyang Wu before he headed to the burning building. These files contain information about companies that have gone bankrupt under Han Jae Kyun's management. Back at home, Zhang Ho receives a mysterious package containing only a key. Intrigued by this unexpected delivery, he heads to the package delivery service to trace its sender. After reviewing the CCTV footage, he discovers that the package was sent by none other than Hyang Wu. Perplexed by the meaning behind this gesture, Zhang Ho turns to Sun Zhou for answers. Unfortunately, even Sun Zhou is unaware of Hyang Wu's intentions. However, things start to click for Zhang Ho when he notices a message on his refrigerator and recalls the number 23 basketball jersey displayed in Hyang Wu's workspace. Racing to the office, Zhang Ho uses the key to unlock locker number 23. Inside, he finds a flash drive containing a recording of Han Jae Kyun's threatening conversations with Kyung Il and others. To his astonishment, Zhang Ho stumbles upon something unexpected while listening to the flash drive. It's a recording of his late father's voice talking to an unidentified person before the events that led to his demise. As it turns out, his father's actions were not as reprehensible as previously believed. Instead, he was murdered by Hyang Wu on the orders of Han Jae Kyun. This revelation shakes Zhang Ho to his core as it becomes evident that Han Jae Kyun used his influence and connections to manipulate the autopsy report and cover up the truth. Upon discovering the truth, Zhang Ho's anger towards Han Jae Kyun intensifies. However, lacking solid evidence, he can only confide in Ji Su about what he has uncovered. The revelation leaves Ji Su in tears, realizing that her father's downfall was orchestrated by Han Jae Kyun. As Zhang Ho returns home, he finds a group of people waiting to harm Ji Su. Luckily, Son Zhou arrives in time to protect her from harm. The following day, Zhang Ho notices Son Zhou's injured hand from the previous night's incident, further fueling his anger towards Han Jae Kyun. Yet for now, their hands are tied. 
Zhang Ho discusses his discovery about his father's death with Song Zhou, but their conversation is interrupted by Yeon Ah's arrival. Zhang Ho refrains from discussing the matter further in her presence. Adding to their troubles, a crisis emerges at Jizen Bank, which is owned by Yeon Ah's father. The bank is facing financial turmoil due to a loan from Han JQ. Zhang Ho had already caught wind of this development when he witnessed Han J. Kuhn's subordinate destroying the deal file. Meanwhile, Sun Zhou, still unaware of Han J. Kuhn's connection to Zhang Ho's father, takes steps to gather his team of subordinates and uncover Han J. Kuhn's overarching plans. With the gathered team of accountants and Kang Yeon joining forces, Sun Zhou's efforts to uncover Han J. Kuhn's plans gain momentum. Song Yan also lends her assistance to the cause. Zhang Ho, armed with information from the flash drive given by Hyun Wu, reveals that Han J. Kuhn had visited the State Finance Commission. He helps Song Yan understand that Han J. Kuhn's true objective is not just becoming the president of Taeyeol Accountant Company, but to gain control over Jizen Bank. This would grant him power over private equity company funds and potentially enable him to influence the country's economy and government. Yon Ah grasps the gravity of the situation and tries to persuade her father to cancel the deal with Han J. Q. However, Yon Ah's father is unable to comply due to Han J. Q.'s threats to reveal a dark secret to Yon Ah if he defies his orders. In light of this, Zhang Ho confides in Sun Zhou about the contents of the flash drive, exposing the truth behind his father's death. The revelation leaves Sun Zhou overwhelmed with anger and guilt, particularly towards Ji Su. In a mix of frustration and remorse, Sun Zhou apologizes for his father's actions and vows to bring down Han Jae Kyun as a small way to make amends for what his father did to Ji Su's father. Sun Zhou confronts Han Jae Kyun with his anger, expressing his shame at having a morally compromised father who would trade lives for power. He declares his disassociation from Han J. Kuhn and his identity as his son. Meanwhile, Zhang Ho learns from Sung Zhou that Han J. Kuhn was responsible for the deaths of both his parents, a revelation that ignites his fury. When Zhang Ho confronts Han J. Kuhn seeking answers, Han J. Kuhn dodges the accusations, demanding concrete evidence rather than mere possibilities from an accountant. The revelation of the truth drives Zhang Ho to a state of intense emotion. He becomes increasingly impulsive and confrontational, resorting to fighting people on the street, a stark departure from his usual rational demeanor. Concerned for his well-being, Zhang Ho's friends observe his deteriorating condition. His actions lead to his absence from work, while Yona grapples with the impending threat of bankruptcy and the potential takeover of Jizen Bank by Han Jae Kyun. Sun Zhou reflects on the revelation about his father's dark nature and begins to realize the gravity of Han Jae Kyun's plan to take over Jizen Bank. Jisoo urges Sun Zhou to return and help their team deal with the chaotic situation caused by Han Jae Kyun's actions. Sun Zhou resolves to support his team, but it's clear that things won't be the same without Zhang Ho's genius contributions. The state of Jizen Bank worsens as the public loses trust and starts withdrawing their funds, triggered by media reports of the bank's impending bankruptcy. Yeon Ah is relieved and overjoyed to see Zhang Ho back at the file room. Their reunion is heartfelt, with Zhang Ho apologizing for his absence. Later, while waiting for Sung Yan at a cafe, Zhang Ho accidentally spills coffee served by Han J. Kuhn's deaf and mute subordinate barista. This encounter highlights the vulnerabilities of the barista and further emphasizes the unethical tactics used by Han J. Kim's associates. Zhang Ho's determination to meet the president director of Taeyeol Accountant Company, despite being a new employee, showcases his strong will and ambition. However, Song Yan explains that such meetings aren't arranged casually, especially for newcomers. Undeterred, Zhang Ho proposes to make the president director come to him, revealing his confidence and strategic thinking. In his encounter with Sung Ju, Zhang Ho seeks to understand why Sung Ju divulged Han J. Kyun's secrets, considering Sung Ju's involvement with Han J. Kyun in seizing the position of president director from Chan Ju. Sung Ju admits to holding a grudge against Han J. Kyun due to their previous collaboration. He had aspired to be president director, but was thwarted by Chan Ju's alliance with Han J. Kyun. 
However, Han Jae-kyun is aware of Sung Ju's intentions and takes steps to undermine him. Han Jae-kyun's manipulation continues, and he plans to frame Sung Ju as the main suspect in the warehouse fire. This strategic move forces Sung Ju to retreat, realizing the extent of Han Jae-kyun's power and his willingness to counter any opposition. When the battle between Sung Jo's team and Han Jae-kyun's subordinates continues, the efforts to restore Jizen Bank's stability and reputation face repeated obstacles. Han Jae-kyun's determination to maintain control and power remains unyielding, and his subordinates are always ready to counter any moves made by Sung Jo's team. In the midst of these challenges, a new development emerges for Zhang Ho. While he is alone in the office, he is approached by a mysterious man who expresses a desire to meet him. This unexpected encounter raises questions about the man's intentions and the potential impact it could have on the unfolding events. In the meantime, the story shifts to Zhang Ho's search for a person who holds a connection to the case of the building collapse that led to the deaths of his parents. This pursuit adds another layer of intrigue to the narrative, as Zhang Ho seeks to uncover the truth behind his parents' tragic demise and the circumstances that led to it. Zhang Ho went to the person's house he mentioned, and there he met the barista. This woman regularly gave information to Han Jae Kyun. She acted as if she couldn't hear or speak, and she did this because Han Jae Kyun told her to. It was a tactic to make people feel comfortable sharing valuable info in her cafe. She did this out of obligation as she graduated from the Taeyeol Foundation, which was funded by Han Jae Kyun. All Taeyeol Foundation graduates had to follow his orders, including Hyung Woo and new members. Even media and important figures who are loyal to Han Jae Kyun are Taeyeol Foundation graduates. This made Zhang Ho realize why Han Jae Kyun appeared so powerful. Since he couldn't figure out how to stop Han Jae Kyun, Zhang Ho invited Yona and Ji Su to meet the Taeyeol Accountant Company's president. The hope was that the president could step in to deal with Han Jae Kyun. With some advice and gathered information, Sung Jo's team of accountants, led by Sung Jo himself, came up with a plan. Their goal is to prevent Han Jae Kyun from taking over Jizen Bank. The plan involves convincing other bank owners to invest in Jizen Bank. However, this isn't easy due to the bank's ongoing bankruptcy, which actually benefits other banks as customers move their money. Despite the challenge, Sung Jo urged his team to work hard and persuade the bankers to attend a prepared meeting. During this gathering, Sung Jo would reveal Han Jae Kyun's true intentions. The team was busy lobbying the bankers, even though it wasn't a simple task. While Zhang Ho met his father, Yona, and disclosed all of Han Jae Kyun's plans. These plans involved taking over Jizen Bank, a scheme that had been in the works for a long time. Zhang Ho asked his father to trust him and promised to fight alongside his team to thwart Han Jae Kyun's plan. As it turned out, the female barista, who used to work for Han Jae Kyun and now supports Zhang Ho, was secretly giving information to Han Jae Kyun about Zhang Ho's movements. This allowed Zhang Ho and Sun Jo to lobby bank owners without interference, informing them about Han Jae Kyun's malicious scheme. Following Jisoo's strategy to expose the wrongdoings of the private equity company, the authorities in charge assessed the situation. This resulted in not only the cancellation of the company representative becoming the bank president, but also thwarted Han Jae Kyun's plan. The bank owners agreed to invest in Jizen Bank out of concern that Han Jae Kyun might take control of it, potentially targeting their banks next. The failure of Han Jae Kyun's plan infuriated him. Once again, Zhang Ho and Sung Jo managed to foil the scheme he had meticulously prepared. As the team of accountants successfully foiled the plan, they celebrated at the cafe. The cafe owner casually mentioned that Zhang Ho had a partner, Yona, which brought smiles and blessings from everyone for their relationship. Now, happiness fills Zhang Ho's life as he goes on dates with Yona, and Sung Jo's relationship with Ji Su grows closer as well. Unbeknownst to them, behind bars, Han Jae Kyun is making moves with the help of his subordinates. Soon, Han Jae Kyun could be released due to lack of evidence to hold him. This keeps Zhang Ho and Sun Jo busy once again, as they hadn't realized that Han Jae Kyun had planned everything from the beginning. 
he foresaw his potential imprisonment and prepared a backup plan to continue his scheme of controlling all the banks. Now, Han Jae-kyun's new plan involves gaining control of all banks by paying off foreign banks located outside of Korea. But soon Jo realizes this is just a beginning. The ultimate aim is for Han Jae-kyun to maintain dominance over the Korean economy. As a result, Son Jo and his team must work hard to convince entrepreneurs and owners to join the consortium formed by Son Jo. This collective effort is crucial to safeguard them against Han Jae Kyun's malicious intentions. However, during their efforts to persuade the owners of the second bank, Son Jo and Jong Ho were taken by surprise. The bank owner had already prepared all the necessary documents for Son Jo indicating that he anticipated their move despite them never having approached him before. While on his way to a meeting organized by Han Jae Kyun, Son Jo's car was unexpectedly stopped by one of Han Jae Kyun's subordinates. To their surprise, this subordinate, who had been involved in persuading the bankers and influencers, expressed interest in joining the consortium that Son Jo had established. Unbeknownst to Son Jo, this situation was exactly what Han Jae Kyun had been waiting for. In fact, this subordinate had secretly shared the same goal of taking down Han Jae Kyun all along. Despite outwardly following Han Jae Kyun's orders, he had been searching for opportunities to expose Han Jae Kyun's wrongdoing and bring him down. With a collection of evidence by Han Jae Kyun's subordinate, Son Jo managed to easily foil Han Jae Kyun's plan once again. Meanwhile, Zhang Ho successfully located Han Jae Kyun's hidden savings. This setback left Han Jae Kyun unable to proceed with his scheme, as he no longer had the financial resources to support it. Although it's possible that Han Jae Kyun might have other plans up his sleeve, Son Jo and Zhang Ho can now find some relief and enjoy their happiness with their partners. Son Jo even gets the chance to meet his son for the first time, which brings him immense joy. At present, Zhang Ho has advanced to the position of a senior accountant and is engaged in training new employees, just as he used to be. His relationship with Yona has gained approval from her father, who considers himself fortunate to have Zhang Ho as a future son-in-law. The story concludes with Han Jae Kyun now leading a company where he is warmly received. However, both Zhang Ho and Soon Jo are prepared to confront any malicious plans at Han Jae Kyun might hatch in the future. The moral of the story is that don't hide your secrets in coffee beans, baristas might spill more than just caffeine.